Okay, you can turn in your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 24. I'm going to do a real quick video here on the subject of preterism or historicism. The traditional, the way that the Christians stood for, for centuries. The Christian church originally was this way, and, and the Jesuits created futurism, and we can prove it. And if you believe that there are you know, future fulfillments of Scripture, then you're very foolish, and everything happened in the first century, and, and we just kind of exist now or something. I, I don't have any dedicated teachings to this because it's always been sort of an, intult, an, an insult to anybody with an intelligent mind, um, this preterism thing. Let me explain, just to basically sum it up. They believe that on a very basic level here, not going into all the details, they believe that the events of Revelation happened in the first century. Okay? So the prophecies there are in the past. There's no future time period to look forward to with the Antichrist and the time of Jacob's trouble and whatever else. That's all just symbolically happened in the first century. And I'll show you what these slick devils have done. This is what they do. I've dealt with them over the years. Matthew chapter 24, this is where they'll take you. Verses 1 through 3. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things. Verily I say unto you that there, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So they say, See, Jesus gives a very specific prophecy for the end times. Okay? Jesus is not giving a specific prophecy for the end times. He's giving a specific prophecy for the near future. But see, what the lying preterist does is they'll come along and they'll say, um, well, no, this is the end times. He's giving this, this thing for the end times. Verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? See, they are thinking in their mind, he's talking about, the end times. Jesus is saying, well, I'll talk to you about that, but what I just told you about there, that's just near future. That's just coming very soon. But here's how they get you. Go to verse 34 of the same chapter, Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. And they'll say, see, Jesus Jesus was talking to his disciples about, you know, they, they came to him and they said, what are the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? And he said about not one stone will be left upon another and that shall not be thrown down. And that meant the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. When did that happen, friends? It happened in the first century, 90 AD. Titus came in and he invaded Israel. It happened back then. And you say, but the, what about the end times? What about the last days? Look at verse 34. Look at verse 34. Get charismatic to deceive people. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. This generation. What generation was he talking about, friends? He was talking about the generation right there in his day. He described the destruction of the temple there, that it would be destroyed. It happened in 90 AD. That generation is the one that saw the times of the end times. There you go. Uh, no. That this generation that he's talking about there is when Israel was reborn as a nation, symbolized by the fig tree of the preceding verses there. Look at it. Verse um, 32, now learn a parable of the fig tree. Fig tree in the Old Testament. There in, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of where that's at. I think it's back in the book of Isaiah. We won't go there for sake of time, but... Now learn a parable of the fig tree when its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. He's talking about Israel, the fig tree, putting forth leaves. It's, it's reborn as a nation. If you remember back in a few chapters earlier, the Lord actually curses the fig tree and says that it's going to die, essentially. And it dies right there. It withers away. But it comes back again. It's reborn and then the Lord starts to deal with the nation of Israel again. Again, remember, God has not cast off the Jewish people. God forbid. God isn't done with the Jewish people. There's, there's blindness in part has happened to them. There's a remnant that gets saved right now. But as a nation, God is saying, okay, I had to put you aside here for just a minute in terms of I'm not going to be dealing with you as a nation. Blindness in part has happened to Israel as the nation. Not individual Jews. Individual Jews can still get saved. God curses them and they die as a nation. But then they're reborn. They come back, which we've seen. 
And that generation is what Jesus is talking about, that they would not pass away till all things are fulfilled. You say, well, that's just your interpretation. It's, that's your interpretation. Then you're, you're a heretic. You don't understand things about the Jews like we understand things about the Jews. Oh, yes, I do. And you're never going to... You heretics out there that attack the nation of Israel and whatever else, and you, well, I'm a preterist and everything already happened and all that. You're never going to turn me from my beliefs, okay? First Timothy chapter 4, we are teaching what Jesuits taught. The Jesuits are the ones that came out with that. That is one of the dumbest things in the world. I can teach you straight from the King James Bible and show you, and anybody with logical sense can look and say, yeah, yeah, that, that lines up with truth. And I didn't have to consult any Jesuit writings or the writings of C.I. Schofield or anybody else. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. We'll stop there for just a minute. Um, in the latter times, this is written to a Christian. It's not, well, we won't be in the latter times. I had some guy in the comments say a little while ago that we will never see any kind of end times type of stuff. We're in this church age time period where we don't see any kind of end time thing or last days type of deal. And it's all when we get called up, then the end time starts. <laughs> no, uh, this is written to a Christian. All right. And you say, well, uh, but how do you know? Oh, well, because I can see it coming to pass. Verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Why all of a sudden is there all this push towards getting rid of meat? Why all of a sudden are all these, all these companies coming out saying we have replacement for meat and we can lab grow meat and we can do all this other stuff. We need to get rid of cows and we need to get destroy our milk or our uh, meat plants and everything else. and Factories, in other words, where they produce the meat, process the meat. Some of them produce the meat too, I'm sure. Uh, lab grown type of stuff, I'm saying. Why all of a sudden is there all this push to get rid of meat? Meat's bad. It makes too much carbon and all this. What's going on? Oh, I don't know. Probably prophecy being fulfilled. Oh, no, wait. That's right. It's the, uh, it's the elites that are, they wrote the Bible and they're using the Bible as their textbook for the end times. That's another one of my favorite ones. I mean, you enter into Cuckooville when you get into that level of thinking, you know. The elites wrote the King James Bible so that they could prophesy and carry out their own destruction. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, that's why they're building their deep underground military bases because, see, it's in Revelation chapter 6. They're going to hide in the dens and the caves and things of the earth and call for the rocks to fall on them. It's all part of their plan. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, you know, lost people are just amazing. Some of the stupid stuff that they come out with, you know, that uh, we know for sure that the Bible is not God's word because it's coming to pass. And therefore, it's the elites that are making it come to pass. And the, they can't reject what the Bible says about the end times, but, you know, it's part of the whole thing. <laughs> Verse 3, we'll read here again. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Okay? Plain and simple. Again, easy. This is milk doctrine, folks. If you want to eat meat, go ahead and eat it. All right? You say, uh, what about snake meat? Go ahead and eat it if you want to. I don't think I could stomach that. Um, what about uh, pork? Go ahead and eat it. What about chicken? Go ahead and eat it. Electric eel. If it's dead and cooked well, I guess. Go ahead and eat it. Um, if it's meat, if it's a creature, you can eat it. No, you can't do that. That's not good for the environment. It's carbon footprint and all that stuff. Uh, don't listen to them. You rebel against that stuff. And remember, it's a doctrine of devils, according to the text there. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Are we seeing it? No, it all happened in the first century. It's all over. It's done. Destruction of the temple, by that time, everything was fulfilled. We're done. We're living in this weird kind of a, I don't even know what, where... 
there is no future catching up. There's no future rule of Antichrist. It just the Antichrist is the office of the Pope, and it's just kind of there, and he just kind of continues for not seven years, but rather almost two thousand years. You know, if you want to go back to the fourth century with Constantine, you know, then we're dealing with right around seventeen hundred years or so that the Antichrist has been ruling. Well, that's not what the Bible says. Well, yeah, symbolically, you know, yeah. You see, it's, it's so weird. The Jesuits supposedly created futurism, and yet you can just read the Bible for yourself, pick up a King James Bible, plain text King James Bible, not one word of commentary in it, and you can come to the conclusions that I'm coming to. But in order to adopt the preterist, historicist interpretation, you have to be taught it. You can look and you can say, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. You can read that and you can say, out there in the world, oh yeah, I'm seeing these things and all this, you know, they just supposedly overthrew, you know, overturned Roe versus Wade. Um, and so now abortion, the states can decide whether they want to make it illegal or not. Are there any fierce people out there that are upset about this? There's going to be burning riots again this summer here in America, probably in other countries as well. How are things going in, you know, Sri Lanka and some of these other countries uh, where there's food riots already happening, coming to the first world nations soon enough? How was it going in there in China, you know, with the food shortage thing and everything going on over there and all the lockdowns and, oh, but uh, I see that stuff and a lot of that, those things really, you know, weren't that bad in the past, but we're not in the end times because it already happened. Yeah. Second Timothy chapter four, turn over there, verses one through eight. This is where we'll end it. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Has that been true for any Christian at all in the, since the beginning of the church age? Well, of course. Any of us can go along with that. But here's another end time prophecy for a Christian. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. You know there are people that profess to be Christians that would rather watch a movie than listen to an hour of preaching. There are people that profess to be Christians that would rather sit around playing video games. I'd like to hear somebody lying to me. I don't want to listen to some Bible-believing preacher that's going to make me feel uncomfortable. I like my pastor. He's a good pastor. He doesn't get me upset. He doesn't, you know, make fun of my Bible version that I use. I prefer the NIV. My friends prefer the ESV, and we all love each other. And we don't ever make any division between ourselves by talking about truth. We are united in, in deception. You know? Yeah, they turn away their ears from the truth, these people. Well, I prefer, you know, Christian rock. Well, I prefer Christian rap. Well, I prefer Christian country music. And I prefer Christian this and Christian that. And what does the Bible prefer? What or nay? What does the Bible command? Oh, well, let's not talk about that. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love uh, the non-appearing appearing in the first century. Uh, the, the book of Revelation being completed in the first century. No, that love his appearing. You know, I don't believe in the imminent 
return in terms of that it could have been that Jesus could have come for his saints at any time in the past. That's not true. Okay, that was a false teaching that a lot of people have perpetuated out there. I do believe that that was created by the Jesuits, by the way. The whole thing of the imminence, the imminent rapture theory, it's nonsense. Okay, obviously there's an end times in the latter times and whatever else. And this, what we just read there in 2 Timothy chapter 4, the time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine. You couldn't make that in the first century. <laughs> you know, People are willing to die for their faith back then. Uh, they're being, you know, put and in, thrown into the Colosseums and being eaten alive by lions and they would not re renounce their faith and all the other horrible stuff that was happening to Christians in the first century. Um, they were enduring sound doctrine. Don't worry about that. But today, yeah, you can make it for today. Definitely prophetically been fulfilled and only going to get worse as time goes by. Um, but this whole thing of this preterist type of a deal, all the different systems of heretical end time belief, and it's all intended to get you off your, to get your eyes off of looking for Jesus Christ. And I'm, if it's another number of years, I mean, as we get closer, it will be imminent. Okay, so there is some truth in terms of the imminence thing. Um, how long do we have to go? Well, I don't know. How much do we have to see? Do we have to be here while the temple starts to get built? Do we have to be here to see more of the mark of the beast, the you know central bank digital currencies that they're trying to bring in this coming year, 2023? I've seen the documents to prove that. They're trying to bring it in as quickly as they can, which means they have to destroy cash. They're going to destroy people economically. There's a lot of stuff that's going to happen. How much do we have to go through? I don't know. But I'm keeping my eyes out for Jesus Christ. I love his appearing. And you say, well, brother, I don't think it's going to be probably for another five, ten years or something like that. Well, okay, then I have work to do in that five to ten years because I don't want to be ashamed before him at his coming. I, uh, hmm. Some special guest is coming over. What do you do? You prepare for them. You get ready. You clean the house. You clean yourself. <laughs> make uh, the place look really nice you get your best dishes out you get the best food in you, you're ready to go well if we do have a number of years yet and i personally think we do i could be wrong um but i if we have a few years yet i want to be ready for jesus i want to love his appearing and all of a sudden a couple years from now boy things have really changed and america is now called new russia or something or you know the the east coast is called New Russia and the West Coast is called New China or something. <laughs> uh, I hope that's not a prophecy, but um, who knows? Lord knows. Uh, but you know, something in the sometime in the future, and you look and you say, "I come into my wife and I say, hey, guess what? Just found out they started building a temple, the Mosque of Omar or whatever there, the Dome of the Rock on Fort Antonia, the Roman fort over there where they're going to build the Antichrist Temple." They're starting to build it. That Dome of the Rock was destroyed, and they're starting to build right there on that spot. All the things of the priesthood and whatever else that they're going to do to get that thing started so the Antichrist can take over it halfway through. Um, it's all coming. It's all happening. Uh, hey, guess what else? My cash doesn't work anymore at the bank. I went to the store. I tried to give them cash. They said, I'm sorry. We can't take that anymore. So, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, did you get the central bank digital currency yet? Or, well, well, yeah, my ATM, my debit card thing, I guess, is hooked up to that system now. I didn't want any part of it, but they hooked it up to the thing here. And they said, well, I'm very sorry, Mr. Denlinger. Your sermon last week, apparently, according to the Department of you know, Homeland Security or whatever it would be, <laughs> um, uh, they, didn't, they didn't approve of what you said. So your channel got a strike there your social media channel that you're required to have. It got a strike and um, your card has been shut off, sir. So I'm very sorry, but you won't be allowed to eat this week until your social credit scores come back up again. Uh, have a good day. Two more strikes and the police will be coming to your house to pick you up to take you to a special um, relearning civilization center or something. Constantly changing the words so you, know, you have to come up with these new words all the time. Just rewrite the vocabulary, you know, with all these new, not just politically correct terms, but all this new woke stuff and everything else, you know. It's not a famine, it's a, you know, uh, food supply chain breakdown. <laughs> crazy. But uh, 
what I was saying earlier there, before I went off on my little rant, um, I want to love his appearing. I want to love to see Jesus Christ. And however much time I have left, and Lord only knows, um, I want to make sure that I get as much work done for him as I can. That should be your prayer if you're saved. I want to love his appearing. But if you're a preterist, you're not looking forward to the appearing of Jesus Christ. All the events of Revelation already took place in the past. I mean, somehow there was the mark of the beast in the past and the you know, third of the trees burned up and everything in the first century. Well, see, symbolically, they have to symbolize and spiritualize everything away. Um, don't listen to this preterist stuff. You know, if they say, well, actually, all the events of Revelation already took place in the past. Now you know how to spot them. They'll take you to Matthew chapter 24. What are the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? And then they'll jump down to this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. They'll say, Jesus describes the destruction of the temple. They say this is the end of the world. And Jesus says, this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. There, it's the first century generation didn't pass away. It was all fulfilled. First century, it's done, it's over. Jesuit futurism, there is no rapture. There is no millennial kingdom. There's no time of Jacob's trouble. No mark of the beast. No prophecies of the, what we just went over there in the Pauline epistles. That's all been taken care of. It's all done. You want to believe that? Well, help yourself. But uh, don't come around and post your stupid nonsense in my comment section because I will delete you. And if you keep doing it, I will block you. Okay, because it's a satanic heresy. Plain and simple. I have no time for that preterist, historicist stuff. It's garbage. And um, post-tribism. We're going to go through the body of Christ. is going through the tribulation. We're going through. Oh, well, then you're not looking for Jesus Christ. You're looking for the Antichrist. Well, we go through part of it. We're pre-wrath, post-trib, pre-wrath, mid-trib, in other words. Um, then you're looking for the Antichrist. <laughs> what can I say? I love the appearing of Jesus Christ because that's the next big spiritual event to hit. Okay? Signs of the end times, signs of the last days, latter times, and whatever else, that's there. But it's all leading to the Lord catching up the body of Christ and the time of Jacob's trouble getting started. That's what it's about. So hopefully that explains some things. Uh, I could do a much more detailed study, but it's, it always goes back to the thing. Again, I've dealt with these heretics, brethren. Please understand that. I really wish people could get that. I've spent hours dealing with these people in person, online, through writing over the years. I know all the little intricate stuff and all the little arguments here and there and whatever else, and it always comes back to the same basic twisting of Scripture. They have to teach that Jesus was saying destruction of the temple happens to the generation that he was speaking to. And it all happened in 90 AD. There it was. Titus was the Antichrist, you know, and the whole thing. The mark of the beast was this and that. And they spiritualized the whole thing. And they get you to basically believe that there is no resurrection coming up in terms of the catching up of the body of Christ, the pre-trib rapture, as it's not really correctly called. They'll teach you that stuff to get your eyes off of Jesus Christ, to take away your crown of reward. And if you don't get away from those people, if you just if you don't take my advice and just say, well, I'll, I'll hear them out and whatever, they'll find some way to put arguments and doubts into your mind to the point where they start to mess you up. Again, I've seen that over the years. I don't know how many people have departed from this ministry because they did not take heed to the warnings that I gave them. Hey, stay away. Oh, you're listening to that guy? Yeah, stay away. He's a heretic. Boy, he's into this or he's into that. Or he's a preterist, whatever else. That'll mess you up. Well, I know, Brother Brian, but they come up with some pretty good arguments. Please trust me. Trust me. This stuff, and I show them the scriptures. This is what the Bible said. I know, Brother Brian. And away they go. Another channel created. You know, I used to be part of the Denlinger cult and whatever. <laughs> So, all right, that's going to be it, I guess, for that study. A lot of other studies coming up to do. The big study that I was talking about, um, the it's up to, I don't remember how many pages now. It's getting bigger and bigger all the time. To those of you who are still here, um, I can't show the notes because I don't want to give away what it's about, but it's just pages and pages and pages of scripture 
this is the weirdest study I have ever done in my life because as a preacher, you have to understand to do an exhaustive work, you end up losing people essentially. And you don't want to give just this little tiny sermonette, you know, two verses and you're done or something and have to get it done in five minutes or less. That's not really sound doctrine. You have to kind of flesh things out better. But to go over every single verse, you can do that, but it can get a little bit tedious and then people kind of, you know, start to lose the main point of the thing. That's why there's a talent there that God gives a man to be able to preach his word in a way that's understandable to the common man as well as to the educated that's open to the truth. That has the Holy Spirit of God in them. Um, but this study that I'm doing, you know, as I've done other sermons over the years, the Lord will give me some subject that I need to preach on and it'll be, okay, this verse, yeah, it kind of proves this point here of this, you know, what the scriptures teach, but then it includes this other thing and I'd have to go off on that and explain that and that takes me over this way and takes me away from the main subject that I'm trying to prove. So I kind of say, well, that's why you'll hear me say a lot of times there's a lot of other scriptures we could go to and there are. Um, what I preach and teach, there are huge amounts of scriptures for most of it um, that we could go to and turn to to prove my points. But I'm trying to keep things condensed and to a point where it makes sense. And so a lot of times I'll get through a sermon, I'm writing out the sermon notes, and the Lord's putting other scriptures in my mind, and I think, oh yeah, I could use that one, and I could use that one. And I just say, you know what, forget it, no, this this will be good, this is a good one to end on, get people to think about it, exhort the brethren. And ironically, a lot of times the other scriptures that I was thinking about putting into the study, a lot of you will put them in the comments. So, you know, the Lord's helping to speak through me, and He's speaking to you. Holy Spirit, it's the spirit of fellowship, which is amazing. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've seen in the comments and people written to me letters offline, letters online, uh, emails and things like that. And they'll say, um, it's so weird. I was praying, God, could you please, I need to know about whatever subject. And I got on YouTube and I was doing a search and I found your video and it was just, I realized that you were preaching this at the exact time I was praying. How is that possible? Fellowship of the Spirit, brethren. That's an amazing thing. Um, but this study, this study, I have been trying to end it now for a while because it's really in-depth. It's extremely deep, profound stuff. And I get to the end and I think, okay, I'm just going to use one or two more scriptures and that's it. I've proved my point. And I'll go to some other scripture and I need it for the study. But in using that scripture, I realize... This opens up a whole other aspect to this thing. This opens up a whole new th thing to what I'm trying to prove here. Wow. And this never happened before, where it's just a, a series of videos. So when is it going to be done? I have no idea. I really don't have any idea at all. I was saying hopefully within a week or two or whatever, I'm just going to have to scrap that because um, right now, Again, if you're frustrated, if I'm not getting back to you, email or letter or whatever, answering letters. Um, I'm teaching my son a lot more. He's getting older now. The homeschooling is, the material that we're giving him is a little bit more difficult. I need to be there teaching him. My wife is doing some as well. We're both kind of taking our turns with teaching him. Um, and so that's why I'm having a hard time getting around to doing stuff. But it's this big study. Uh, it looks like it's going to end up being a book that I'm going to write, but I'm definitely going to bring it out first online, Lord willing, unless the Lord tells me to do differently. I would like to bring it out first online, release it as a preaching study, and I'd like to hear the body of Christ. I'd like to hear your thoughts on what I'm saying and what the Lord's revealing to me, and it's amazing stuff. And it's not some brand new doctrine or whatever else that people will say, Oh, now Brian Denlinger, he truly is God now, and we have to worship him and you know give up our names and call ourselves Denlingerites and wear red and black buffalo plaid or something. <laughs> like my enemies would love to see happen. They'd really have a time with that. Um, no, no. It's not a new doctrine that I'm going to be speaking. It's just a reinforcing of the supernatural power of this blessed book right here. Um, I love this book. I dedicate my life to this book, this King James Bible, 
And what the Lord's shown me about it right now is a amazing blessing. It just gives me chills. I've never seen this stuff before. It's incredible stuff. So I'm really anxious to bring it out, but I have no idea when it's going to come out because the Lord just keeps on showing me more and more and tying into this and tying into that. And I think, oh man, it's going to be a whole other study and it's a whole other day of, you know, and that's tough to do when you're a father and a husband and all the other stuff I have going in my life. It's tough to sit down for hours and just get into a really deep concentration state. And I don't mean through meditation or something. I'm just saying, okay, no videos, no, you know, just music that will help me really focus in on this. And I don't, you know, I tell my son, don't come in here and bother dad. I have to really study here. No distractions. You know, my wife, I'll say to her, please don't come in and ask me a question. Just let me study. And uh, so please do keep me in your prayers for that. Uh, it's going to be a real blessing when it comes out. That's all I can say for now. So hopefully these last couple of videos have been a great blessing to you. It's been a blessing to me to be able to preach these things. And um, so that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your comments. And if you want to hit the like button on the videos, that would be great. I'd like to really help this channel to move along and things. I've never been whatever cared, but you know, I want to reach people. So and I'm not going to artificially inflate my numbers like others have, you know, <laughs> uh, you know who I'm talking about. If you follow the ministry, um, we'll let the Lord move things forward. So, but, uh, Thank you to, the, to those out there that support the ministry. So we'll see you in upcoming videos and uh, stick close to the word of God.